Hello and welcome to the 11th part of my Powered Up tutorial that you can use for Powered Up, Control Plus and Lego Boost. Today we will talk about how to build a remote controlled car that gets controlled with the Powered Up remote and at the same time we will talk about how to use more than one hubs. This is the program from the last part. I removed the input from the sliders because we won't need them for this part. And in this part, I'll try to control the Control Plus vehicle with the remotes, but you can use any other vehicle as well. Or you can control basically everything that you want with the remote. I will only show this for this vehicle in this video. And first of all, let's talk about how to use the remote. You can connect it easily or normally like any other hub to the Powered Up app. It will just appear like that here. And then you can measure the things that you press with this sensor block. It's this orange block that has a remote on the top. So let's try what happens if I press one of the keys. We can see that it shows us some symbols, but we can look closely and then we'll see that this block has a, has a round edge. And that means that the actual output is a number. So we can see this as a numeric value. However, we don't know which button relates to which value. And to do or to find that out, we can go to the white blocks and then we can simply add one to the output and the resulting output will always be a number. I got this trick from the YouTuber Racing Brick, so uh, thanks I guess. But now let's try to press the buttons again. We saw that we can see the number 0 if no button is pressed. We see the number 1 if the plus button is pressed, minus 1 if the minus button is pressed, and 127 if the stop button or the red button is being pressed. For this part, I neglect the stop or the red button because it makes the program much more complicated, and we focus on the other two buttons, on the plus and on the minus button. We have two sides on the remote. They are labeled A and B, and here we can select A and B as well. And I want to use the left side of the remote, the A side, to control the motor to drive, and the right side to steer. Get another block, select B, and then we have one block that returns the values to steer, and one block that returns the values to drive. And we can already plug this here, but it won't work like that. We want to control two hubs and we have the remote and the Technic hub. The remote is the hub number one because now these numbers are important and the Technic hub is number two. So everything that has the numbers A or B or C or D tries to access this hub. It doesn't make sense for the light and it doesn't make sense for the controller, but it will try it anyways. To access the other hub, we'll have to get another block. Here in the white blocks, we have at the left this block with two hubs. And here we can select a number that has to correspond to this number. And we can select a port. So this is basically a port, just that we can use it for more than one hub. And our Technic hub is on port 2. So we have to access port or the second hub to access the Technic hub. In this case, the lights are on port B. So we can put that in, on B. And we can already look if it works, if we can change or if we can turn on the lights of the car. So let's try that. I will simply start the program and the lights get turned on. 
that works pretty well. So now we can access both the first and the second hub. In total, we can access up to four hubs with the app, but we will stick to two, the remote on the first channel and the Technic Hub on the second channel for this video. The motors are attached to the Technic Hub as well, so we have to select the second hub for them as well. So now we can access the motor and the light of the second hub, and we can simply drag the numbers here, and then the values of the remote that we press, the numeric values, will be given to the motor values. So basically, I can press plus on the remote, and then this plus, this one as, as output, will get transferred to the input of this motor, and it will drive with a speed of one. However, a speed of one isn't very fast. It's so slow that we won't see that, so we will have to make the number larger, and that's pretty simple. We can multiply it with 100, because the maximum input for speed and stuff like that is 100. Now we can use this, use this as an input for that. We can use this as an input for that. And this program might already work. Do you remember a problem in a past part? In my model, the motors to drive are the wrong way around. So we always had to multiply it, the number of the speed input with negative or minus one. We could do this as well. So we could multiply the value of the remote with minus one and use that as an input. But we could also multiply the output here with minus 100. That way it would be multiplied with minus 1 and 100 at the same time. However, we don't need that in this part because with the remote we can turn the status around and simply use the negative number as a positive one. Let me show that so we can already start the program. The car will start to calibrate. We can simply turn the slider around and then the negative button will be on top and we will press the negative button, but it will be on the position of the positive button. So the model will drive forwards if we press the forward position. The same can be done for the steering. In my case, it steers the wrong way around. So we can turn the right slider around and then it will steer how we want it. So the solution for problems doesn't always have to be from a computer science perspective. Sometimes you can also find physical solutions. This was it for this part of the tutorial. I think that in the next part, we will look at how to simulate a fire or a lamp, because sometimes you might want to build a model that shows some part of the nature. You have some people camping, and then you want to have a fire that has a firelight. And we will check out how to do that in the next part. You can already try to, th to think of solutions on how to simulate a firelight or the movement of the light that the fire does for the next part. Anyways, that was it for this part. Thanks for watching. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comments. See you in the next part and bye.